but making it illegal to give an opinion if you're a journalist to require people to not be allowed to say anything unless it's the definitive truth or else sounds like what happens under authoritarian dictatorship <laughs> not free democracies <laughs> why is everything dictator now oh my god trudeau farts and everyone's like that was the sound of hitler manifest come to life I haven't been following the Tucker Carlson AOC saga, so I figured I would go uh, and explore what this is all about and uh, see where the culture war is at, because uh, we need to position ourselves in the cultural zeitgeist in order to truly understand it. Tim, what is on your radar? Well, on Friday, Tucker Carlson opened his show not talking about the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Not talking about the brutal crackdown on protests in Canada, but instead talking about a book New York Magazine is putting out on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez titled Take Up Space, the Unprecedented AOC. The segment, which I'll show you clips in a moment, seemed to cause AOC to have a mini meltdown. Rather than let it go, she tweeted angry tweet after angry tweet. She started off with... This is the type of stuff you say when your name starts with a P and ends with DJ. I have to say, I, I didn't know. I... <laughs> DJ. <-o. laughs> it's Bandejo. <laughs> oh, man. My Spanish isn't what it used to be, but come on. <laughs> it starts with a P and ends with DJ. I have no idea what language she's trying to invoke there. It just it sounds Martian to me, but truly, truly despicable stuff. Probably said that wrong. Dejo, P, and day. I, I don't know Spanish, but I didn't know what that meant. And then I was informed that this is. You're a reporter. You have a lot of resources. You could research this before you went on the air and embarrass yourself. That's a thing you can do. You have that power at any time. You can invoke it. You can be like, hey, can you look up what this Dejo is? And then they would tell you. And then this wouldn't have happened. A word that means. Yeah, a or Google. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. Or you can. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Oh, okay. Now I get it. A hole, basically, in Spanish. She then went on to tweet, quote, Remember when the right wing had a meltdown when I suggested they exhibit obsessive impulses around young women? Well, now Tucker Carlson is wishing for this on national TV. You're a creep, bro. If you're this easy with sexual harassment on air, how are you treating your staff? Any man that talks like this will treat any woman like this. Doesn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat, or neither. This is clearly not a sane, a safe person to leave alone with women. Once again, the existence of a wife or daughters doesn't make a man good. And this. Okay, I need to play the clip in question. Let's see. By the way, the person who wrote this didn't even perceive how creepy it was. I'm alone today, Ocasio Cortez says pointedly at the camera. Is it just us, or does that sound like an invitation to a booty call? Maybe one step from what are you wearing? By the way, it's a little strange. It's definitely oversharing. <laughs> is that is that how she said it, Tucker? Is that how the inner monologue was going? I feel like this is a self-report. I, I feel it's like she was like, "Well, I'm alone tonight, and I just want to talk to you about this cooking stream I'm going to do." He's like, "You're alone tonight? Oh my!" Outside of the viewers, of course, of which I'm I'm one of. A mere 30,000, but still, I feel unique. There's some some kind of a parasocial relationship going. How how did you pronounce that? I'm alone tonight. I feel like she's speaking to me, specifically. I mean, she's not really alone. I'm here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gross. I think that's where the story could have ended. One is basura, which means trash um, in Spanish. So clearly she's accusing Tucker of sexual harassment. Oh, oh, so you looked that one up? So so that one got the review, but not the first one? <laughs> she's insinuating that he sexually harasses his staff and worse, that he's not safe to be alone with. So she's also insin insinuating that he's perhaps I don't, maybe a rapist or a predator of some kind. And she wasn't finished. The next day she picked back up and tweeted, I genuinely want to know why Tucker Carlson is allowed to pay is allowed slash paid to engage in clear targeted libelous harassment that uh, libellous harassment that endangers people and drives so many violent threats that people have to fundraise for their own safety. Why should they have to pay for his harassment? Make it make sense. So she's accusing Tucker of inciting violence against her that put her in danger. She claims he is engaging in libel, which is written defamation. I think she meant slander, which is saying something false that damages a person's reputation. She finished off her rant by saying, quote, 
It's not within the realm of political commentary, and it's not just me. He regularly targets people that do not have access to resources for protection once he gets to fantasizing about booty calls of women. I don't know if that could be considered slander. It's more just Tucker Carlson being creepy. But, like, if he's, like, you know, speculating on what he thinks the coded messaging could have been towards him, then, yeah, he's being a creep show. But I don't know if that's slander. That's him just being, like... Oh, well, maybe, maybe she's talking. Is this a booty call? Was she sending me one? I don't know. And on national TV, I cease to see the political value outside of incitement. So incitement is the action of provoking unlawful behavior or urging someone to behave unlawfully. So she's accusing Tucker of provoking his audience to do something illegal, presumably towards her. Now, these are some pretty serious accusations, insinuating he sexually harasses his staff, that he isn't safe for women to be. I think you're going in the opposite direction just as strongly. Let's see again. It's not within the realm of political commentary, and it's not just me. He regularly targets people that do not have access to resources for protection. Once he gets to fantasizing about booty calls of women on national TV, I cease to see the political value of it outside of incitement. I generally want to know why Tucker Carlson is allowed and paid to engage in clear, targeted, libelous harassment that endangers people and drives so many violent threats. Yeah, I'll agree with you. It, it was not uh, It was not libelous. Uh, why should we have to pay for his harassment? Making this make sense. You can be charged with a crime yourself. But making it illegal to give an opinion if you're a journalist, to require people to not be allowed to say anything unless it's the definitive truth or else, sounds like what happens under authoritarian dictatorship, <laughs> not free democracies. <laughs> Why is everything dictator now? Oh my god, Trudeau farts and everyone's like, that was the sound of Hitler. Manifest come to life. In response to AOC's tweet about why Tucker is allowed to speak, this person responded, because it's classified as opinion. This needs... <laughs> Thank you, uh, random account 2652224. Thanks for making the mainstream news. <laughs> it's to change. And this guy, Bill Slusser, thinks the First Amendment needs to be amended. He tweeted... Fox News doesn't need to allow him to have that platform. Therein lies the problem that the Fourth Estate has abandoned any decency. While it isn't possible, it makes me think maybe the First Amendment needs to be looked at for today's world. Thanks, Bill and Bob Bill. Again, making the news in prime time. Why are we using random Twitter comments as sources for anything now? Now, comments like these go on and on under AOC's tweets. And this is the real story in all of this. Forget the squabble between Tucker and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Who okay. cares? It isn't news. Tucker does this exact same thing to Anthony. You did turn it into an entire segment. That, that That's the segment we're watching right now. Uh, AOC melts down over Tucker Carlson, calls him violent and unsafe. Andrew Cuomo. He even talks about his muscles. He drags on Don Lamont all the time, and Hunter Biden gets the worst of the treatment, if you ask me. Maybe merited, but nonetheless, he talks about his sex life <laughs> and drug habits. <laughs> Maybe merited? <laughs> I mean, it's totally okay when it's happening to Hunter Biden, but I am going to call this out right now, so here we go. Tucker picking on AOC isn't some act of sexual harassment or targeted attack on women. It's just what he does from time to time. Engage in petty lunchroom bullying. Let's just watch a clip from his segment me to retire by the way the person who wrote this didn't even perceive how creepy it was i'm alone today ocasio cortez says pointedly at the camera is it just us or does that sound like an invitation to a booty call maybe one step from what are you wearing by the way it's a little strange it's definitely oversharing people already try to diminish me and diminish my voice as young and frivolous and unintelligent <laughs> They don't take me seriously when I put on eyeshadow. People are calling me unintelligent just because I'm dumb. So this was just a clip from a longer segment that you can seek out and watch in its entirety for yourself. Now, was it news? No, I don't think so. I don't think Tucker should be talking about this. Was it worthy of the top of his hour, you know, the top hour of his show? Probably not. But was it sexual harassment and an incitement of violence? No, it absolutely wasn't, not even a little. But the problem is AOC, with all of her influence, is shaping American culture. People look up to her and they follow her lead. When she says someone, ma someone making fun of her eyeshadow tutorial is potential violent predator who shouldn't have a platform, people begin to call for censorship. When she claims words are violence, which she does on numerous occasions. 
I feel like you're you're like directly fanning the flames in the opposite direction, right? Like if you want to say AOC was wrong to say this was libelous, I agree with you. I, I I don't think that was libelous. I don't think it was slander. At the end of the day, I think that's Tucker Carlson being a creep show. If you didn't know, uh, this is like the first time you're finding out he's he's a big old creep show, all right? And I don't just mean that in that he's like you know creepy sexually, although he is creepy sexually, but I mean mostly for the fact that like he just vilifies immigrants as being like dirty, unclean people, not befitting of American culture or Western society. Society and the Great Replacement stuff, too. Probably bigger things to, to call out than, you know, defending Tucker in this instance. And calls for words to be silenced and even punished. Her followers agree. She is shaping an entire generation of woke liberal Gen Zers into championing censorship and supporting becoming a one narrative nation where dissenting and critical journalists are, quote unquote, held accountable for their misinformation. You can only agree with her or shut up. You certainly aren't allowed to make fun of her. If Wait, like the, these are these are opinion pieces on Fox. I mean, if someone is calling for Tucker Carlson uh, to be reprimanded and or even removed from the Fox network, first off, I mean, again, we're getting into this weird free speech thing. I, I think people conflate uh, conflate freedom of speech with like like a, a, a Fox News that that's a private corporation. If they're firing one of their journalists, that's the decision of a corporation to do so. It's it's not impacting the speech of every single person. You can call out what people say. I mean, that's there's nothing wrong. I think there's it's perfectly fine to say, hey, Tucker Carlson was being a creep. Here's his creep show clip. It's also perfectly fine to say, like, hey, by the way, Tucker Carlson is the most mainstream figure in, uh, I would say, uh, late night television in the U.S. pushing the Great Replacement conspiracy theory, which is kind of fucked up, you know, shit like that. That 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 that's a totally fine thing to say. But then to, I don't know, inflate this entire thing into this grandiose. This is actually about free speech, and this is about censorship, and this really comes down to the fundamental principles of American society and the First Amendment to the Constitution. If you make fun of her, it's violence, and you're a predator. This is exactly the mentality of those who stormed into Charlie Hebdo and massacred the journalists who dared to make fun oh, of the Prophet Muhammad. AOC has a choice to make. She can either Mark. take a stand to protect our First Amendment and journalists' right to criticize and make fun of political leaders, including her, or she can continue to influence her millions of followers into believing the First Amendment needs amending, Amend me, amending away from free speech and instead towards what she considers right speech. And that, to me, guys, is the biggest issue with this squabble between them. It's, you know, Tucker does this Tucker stuff. Um, you know, do, I agree with her. I don't think that's really news, and nor do I think it really belongs anywhere like that. But the the real issue for me is the influence she then has and what she's been, how she's been able to shape the minds of many. You get what you're saying out loud right now, right? You're scared of the power that someone has independently on Instagram. By the way, Instagram could silence AOC tomorrow if they wanted to. They could just remove her account. She'd have no more live streams, no more power like that. But, uh, okay, so in one direction, we've got that. And she's just got this untold power that frightens me because she's able to give this messaging that I think is dangerous to lots of people. Unlike Tucker Carlson, who reaches way more people when he broadcasts on Fox News Live. That's actually millions of people. And his messaging is just uh, boys will be boys is basically what's happening here. Many young people who adore her, who follow her, and they think she's right all the time. And then when she says we need to go after misinformation and we need to crack down on this violent speech, that to me is a giant problem. She's to me very, very scary for the. So what are you doing? Are you, are you calling for censorship? Do you, do you want her to be? Are you trying to take away her First Amendment rights? Is that it? Are you trying to get Instagram to remove her account? Because I feel like I'm hearing the exact same argument, just in the opposite direction. I don't see any consistency here, Kim those reasons for her well, influence. I mean, I, I do think there's far too much of an impulse on, on the left towards censorship, but I also don't think that criticizing Tucker Carlson over, over this. Is I think that there's a big problem right now with everyone thinking that if someone calls out your shitty behavior, that they're asking for you to be permanently silenced. Like, when someone has a really shitty take and then everyone's like, whoa, hey, that take was shitty. Like, all of a sudden it's like, well, that's basically right there. You, you see the left, what they're trying to do is they're trying to, like, take down modern society because they're trying to basically impose the system of cancel culture on every single person, which will 1984 us into a dystopian future that I don't want to be a part of. Is remotely comparable to storming into Charlie Hebdo and, and slaughtering journalists there. That I don't, I don't think those are anywhere <laughs> it's near. It's the mentality. <laughs> Okay, let's rewind that, because <laughs> that's a good little back and forth there. <laughs> I do think there's far too much of an impulse on, on the left towards censorship, but I also don't think that criticizing Tucker Carlson over, over this is remotely comparable to storming into Charlie Hebdo and, 
and slaughtering journalists there. That I don't I don't think those are anywhere. It's near the mentality. The no, same. but it's the mentality. The mentality of you cannot make fun of. Well, it's a slippery slope fallacy. You see what's going on here. Is that actually uh, they start out like this, and then AOC eventually will become uh, you know it'll be like Charlie Hebdo all over again. You're not allowed to go after and tease because if you do, then it's violence. It's dangerous, and it has okay, to be but- stopped. Okay, if, if somebody... <laughs> well, right, like, you, do you know what happened at Charlie Hebdo in, in France? Do, do you know that story, Kim, the one I'm referencing? Do you understand why it's kind of outrageous to, to conflate the two? I, but what are we doing here? Like, let's say Tucker Carlson was on a Zoom call at, at any company, and a woman on the Zoom call said that they were at home alone. And he said on that Zoom call that... Oh, wow, that sounds like an invitation for a booty call. That's sexual harassment. Like, that is. Like, that, that's, it, it's inappropriate. It, it, it is harassment. And he's doing it on national television. But to, and a, I think public, what, uh, to a public figure, so, right? Okay, fine. But it's fine for her to point out that that's sexual harassment. And it's gross and it's creepy. Well, then yeah, he sexually harasses that, Andrew Cuomo it, a, all the time. What I, mean, I agree with Kim, that it, it's a problem to... It's a really bad idea, or maybe not a problem, it's just a bad idea to want to change the law to criminalize right. that kind of thing. I don't Any think it should be criminal, but it's... But uh, no one is proposing that. You are. You're the, the panel is. You're, you're the ones who are like, and that's why she's basically trying to do a cancel culture and then shut down free speech in this country. You understand that, right? The, the implication. Gross. Yeah, well... Criticism of public officials is often, I, I think there is more latitude for it to be, I mean, pe- think about how people talk about Donald Trump's appearance and physicality, right? There, there is greater leeway given yeah. to mocking the appearance of political. But Ryan isn't saying that you can't do that. You can. These are public figures. If you want to be a creep show, go be a creep show. He's saying that if you call it out, it's not wrong to identify it as what he's doing as creepy. Figures, you know, AOC has made herself a kind of cultural icon. I'm not saying I agree with using that kind of. I wish our politics could yeah, be more and, civil in and general, all, but there is a there is a kind of. It's not quite the same when it's leveled at a member of the government. And the constant like homophobic stuff around Trump and Putin, I thought that was inappropriate too. Yeah, like, it's, it's similar. Like you, you, it's legal to do it. Go ahead. You don't have to do that. Like Tucker doesn't have to go on air. And harass and say say something that's like but, that would be harassment in any workplace. Kim, have have you seen this? I, I've seen a lot of. There was apparently this. That's a good statement. I mean, if you had a like a, a coworker and then you were like, hey, by the way, I was watching your live stream yesterday, and they're like, oh, cool. Did you like it? It's like, yeah. I, I'm just kind of curious. The part where you were like, I'm alone tonight at the very start of it, that was for me, right? It's like, sorry. It's like, yeah. When you said I'm alone tonight, you were implying that I should come over, so you're not alone anymore. That's. That's the implication of why you said that. You said that to me, knowing I would say this the next day. Like, yeah, you'd be like, okay, this is super fucked up. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Study, it looked like a BS study to me. Uh, uh, People saying that when someone like Tucker, or actually they they invoke Glenn Greenwald specifically too, when they, if they criticize you, um, on Twitter, then you're gonna, you know, get flooded with harassment and death threats. Wait, hey, that might be true, right. but we all, you know, all of us, it, it's not just young women who get them. I get them, you get them, everyone in the, it, it's in the, in the commentary business, um, you know, has had at times these high profile clashes with people who have bigger platforms than you do, and it can be really unpleasant, really nasty. I don't think that means it's, it's that person's fault, certainly not in a legal sense. It shouldn't be that person's fault in a legal sense. But there are people talking seriously about how, oh, we should think about this in a kind of liability or censorship regime. And that does, that does worry me. There, there's an appetite for that it, kind of thing. It, it goes, and it goes beyond that. It's not even just wanting to change the laws and make things I- illegal or calling for more censorship from, from... I feel like a creep when I look in hot tub streams and then I leave. Like, you don't have to, like, feel that way, though. Like, the purpose of a person who's doing a hot tub stream, doesn't matter if they're a man, a woman, non-binary, whatever, they want to be seen. That's the whole point that they're doing that. That's The difference here is that there isn't really any consent between Tucker Carlson and AOC, right? She's like, she was not saying that because she wanted to be, uh, I don't know, objectified or, or imply to Tucker Carlson that she's doing a booty call. That's That's where the whole problem comes from social media there is a moral left that is rising and they believe they are in the moral 
They are the moral right, and they believe that they can punch Nazis in the face. They believe that they can go and, and actually uh, resort to violence because they're so morally superior in this way. Yeah. That is... That was a really weird way of putting this. <laughs> Whereas I want to hug the Nazis, obviously, because they are Nazis at the end of the day. Very dangerous. That is it. That mentality that she is shaping to me is the most dangerous aspect of this. What Tucker does on his what, show. What? Punchy Nazis? <laughs> the biggest threat to American democracy. <laughs> oh, making fun of people. And like I said, he does it to Andrew Cuomo. Like, oh, look at his big muscles. If that's not sexual harassment, then I don't know what is, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, the, the actual trying to shape the minds of young people and say, we're in the moral right and they're in the wrong and they're violent, which means you have to do something to stop them from this horrible violence. She's not just saying, wow, he's an idiot and wrong. She's, she's saying he's violent and that he's inciting violence against her. That is, those well, are strong not, it, claims. Is it, is it hard to predict what the reaction was to him saying that she sounds like she wants a booty call? Like, what, what do you think her message is? devolved into over the next couple of hours like Tucker's a smart person he knows exactly now should that be illegal no it doesn't mean she should be banned but like let's be serious it, it, it is going to provoke that I, I'm, I'm for improving the public discourse the dialogue yes there should be less commenting on people's appearances cheap shot type things but criticize the ideas not the person that is certainly a good lesson for you know for everybody well and and in China, that is actually the law there. That is how they operate their pol politics. You're not allowed to criticize the government. You can't criticize and them we don't personally. Want those, those laws. Yeah. Right, but you can. You can. <laughs> but again, so much like uh, that's not where the conversation was going. But sure, I mean, we still have a, a minute left. So if you want to slag on China, let's uh, throw that in there. And criticize the policies. You are le you are allowed to criticize your pol the politics of the policy, you know, of the politicians, but you cannot criticize the actual person, which is interesting. And maybe, I don't know, maybe that's where people want to take no, us. we should not have that. No, 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 no. Very, <laughs> very bad, no. Just, I think, but we and, should and I just think what all be more responsible. We don't need prompting uh, requiring. Uh, like, okay, if people are gonna call you out, especially on Twitter, because I've done that to Kim, by the way, I've ratioed Kim with some of like her shitty takes. Uh, I was not calling for Kim to be censored. I'm sure uh, any of the other hundreds of people who were ripping into her at that time weren't calling for it either. Like, I, I think there's this big difference that people have to isolate between you know, uh, whatever, call out culture or cancel culture because they get conflated and the idea is that like, uh, yeah, if, if people are being uh, really shitty online and someone else is like, hey, you're being shitty, that person isn't 1984 in like uh, in real time. Like, are we living in a world where if someone's like, oh, by the way, this race is inferior to the other race. It's like, well, don't say anything mean to them. Come on, don't don't point out why that's really, really racist or yikesy. We shouldn't do that because that's cancel culture. We don't want to cancel culture anybody. All right. We don't want to get into this whole punch Nazis. OK, mentality. We just basically want to let them do their thing. And then we'll put out opposing views over far, far away in a different section of the Internet. No one gets to see it. And in that section of the Internet, you can say, actually, no race is superior to another race. We'll do that over in this corner over here, and then we'll leave them to do their thing over there, and never the two shall meet. That, that, that's basically like the ideal. That's the future of the internet, right? 1984. ...from the government, but it's it better to be more civil and more kind and try to reach consent, yeah. but it, it just criticize. Look, I don't like AOC's ideas at all. I actually, I don't, I actually don't think she's stupid at all. I think she's a very no, smart right. and well-spoken representative of ideas I think are bad and wrong, but often the people on the other side are. Oftentimes they are very smart. Like very smart people can disagree about, about poli they can know, people on the other side can know way more than I do. Smart about people can even wear matters. makeup, I've, I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You instantly yeah, become dumb wrong. when you're putting on I think the, I think the joke there is all three of them must be wearing makeup because you know you're on TV. They've, they've got some foundation, you know. There's there's definitely a little little lip gloss going on, a little lip gloss game too. Yeah. 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 His whole segment when I watched the whole thing, I was like, oh my god. I mean, he was just wrong on so much of it. I agree. I do think she's very intelligent. Uh, you know, he was like, oh, she's a white woman. She's clearly not. Like there were things. You know, <laughs> what does that it even was, mean? I saw that part too. I, like I, I was just so dumb. I don't know. I, yeah, don't know. I, I think, and I think. I'm so happy I caught up with this story finally after everything else that was going on in the world, you know, the trucker occupation, the Ukraine Putin saga. Finally, I'm I'm hitting the stories that matter. I'm glad it's 
it's been a while, you know, it's, and, and it feels good. It feels good to catch up on just useless garbage, just fucking, you know, lightning speed monkey feces. Uh, it's, it's great. It's, it's, it's just, it's just here for me to enjoy. And, and here we are, you know, Jesus hates AOC. Oh, oh man. AOC. I mean, in all honesty, it's one of those things where, you know what? There's so many things you could criticize AOC for. The thing is, a lot of them probably Tucker doesn't agree with, right? Like, if it's Iron Dome funding, Tucker Carlson's not going to be like, well, AOC had the audacity to vote present on an Iron Dome fund. No, he's like, because he obviously supports the Iron Dome. So, for all the things that you could criticize AOC for, uh, they don't really go after them. And and then instead, he just reverts to like, and why would she say that? Is it a booty call? For me? We'll see. We'll just see. Do you enjoy the surfs, but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form. Available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free. Just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, we beseech thee to smite down our enemies. To our monarch, Tom Spiker. We are but your humble court jesters, here to amuse you. To our lords, Trevor R. We give thanks for this spit of land for us to eke out this meager existence. To our knights, Merid, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruby Kelly, Ellie Leslie, Alex P., Brandon, Words Greenwood, Nate, that one guy, Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariane McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Coulter Smith, Val 9000, Jenna Tall, Quiet 185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, The Tim Caucus, Multi Mondi, Trevor Yanis, Lemmy 101, Anthropophojack, Seren 42, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Nkosin, Violet Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Josh Mickelson, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our flag in a veil, and we salute you, our friends.